On the south side of Chicago, in the Inglewood neighborhood, there's a corner grocery store called the Loomis Food Mart. It's a neighborhood staple. In the early evening hours of November 19, 2014, Crystal Jackson and her friends arrived there to pick up a few items. The store was buzzing with a constant stream of customers coming in and out, grabbing a few items, and going about their evening. But that wasn't the full story. Because what Crystal didn't know while she was shopping at the Loomis Food Mart was that just a few blocks away, the defendants, members of the street gang, were plotting their revenge, and Crystal's friends were their targets. So when the defendants showed up at the Loomis Food Mart, although they shot at Crystal's friends, they killed Crystal. She was murdered simply for being in the wrong place at the wrong time, a casualty of this gang's street war with its rivals. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, murders like Crystal Jackson's are why you are sitting here today. They were committed by the Goonie Boss Goonie Gang Street Gang, or the Goonies for short. And more importantly, Crystal's murder was part of a much larger pattern of criminal activity by the Goonies a criminal organization who ruled on the South Side in the Englewood neighborhood from approximately 2014 to 2018. Each of the defendants sitting here before you today were members of the Goonies and each defendant committed murder and other violence on behalf of the gang. First in the black shirt is Romeo Blackman, O or O Dog, the leader of the Goonies. Blackman was one of the Goonies trusted to commit shootings a gang member who was not afraid to pull the trigger. These were the gang members with the most respect. Commit a murder or, quote, get a body, and a Goonie member's status, both inside and outside, the gang increased. After joining the Goonies, Blackman quickly built a reputation for violence that catapulted him to leader. And from his post as leader, Blackman groomed the younger Goonies or the shorties as they called them. Black men placed a premium on the shorties who weren't afraid to shoot at opposition gang members, or ops as the Goonies called them. Many of the younger Goonies looked up to black men. They wanted to be like black men. If black men told you to commit a murder, if he told you to get a body, you followed his orders, and some of the time he provided the gun to do it. Sitting next to black men to the right is Terrence Smith, or T., another one of the Goonies. In Blackman's rise to power, Terrence Smith was his right-hand man. Smith committed violence and murder on behalf of the Goonies. And directly behind Terrence Smith in the back right corner is Jalicious Terman, or Jojo, another one of the Goonies, another one of its trusted members who committed shootings and violence on behalf of the gang. Each of the defendants sitting before you today has been charged as being members of a criminal racketeering conspiracy. The defendants conspired with each other and with others to engage in crimes, including murder, attempted murder, and assault with a dangerous weapon. The defendants committed murders together, some of them in a cold, calculated, and premeditated way. The defendants also committed attempted murders and assaults together, violent crimes committed on behalf of the Goonies to make money, to preserve power, to preserve territory, and to scare and intimidate the public and witnesses. Members of the jury, the Goonies are what you call a criminal enterprise, and their purpose was simple. They wanted power, and they wanted status on the streets of Chicago. They wanted money, and they wanted respect, and they wanted people to fear them. The crimes the Goonies committed to achieve these goals are called racketeering acts, over the next several weeks, we will walk you through the evidence that will prove each of these defendants guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You will have a front row seat into each. You will have a front row seat into the world of the Goonies. It's a dark world. A world of rival gangs, daily shootouts, stealing guns, selling drugs, backstabbing your own, and persistent violence. Between 2014 to 2016, in the span of less than two and a half years, defendants Romeo Blackman, Terrence Smith, and Jalicious Terman committed at least 10 murders and six attempted murders. Each of these red dots represents murder or attempted murder committed by the Goonies. Each of these crimes occurred in the Englewood neighborhood. This is eight miles from where we're sitting here today. 
And these red dots, they represent real people. Fathers, daughters, brothers. The Goonies conduct shattered real lives. During trial, I want you to pay close attention to how the defendants and the Goonies approach committing their acts of violence. Some of the murders and shootings were planned in advance. The target, whether it was a rival gang member or someone who they thought might talk to the police, was picked out. The crime was planned, it was calculated, and then it was executed. Some of the murders happened in broad daylight for everyone to see to send a message. And if that wasn't enough, the Goonies would then broadcast their violence on social media using Facebook to brag and to taunt. I also want you to pay close attention to who the defendants worked with and surrounded themselves with. Because, of course, the three defendants on trial were not the only members of the Goonies. You'll see that Blackman, Smith, and Terman surrounded themselves with other gang members, other co-conspirators, to commit the crimes that they are charged with. In fact, over the next several weeks, you'll hear from people who worked for and with the Goonies. They will take the stand and they will testify about the Goonies. These witnesses will provide you with a window into the operation of the Goonies. Most are self-admitted gang members, and you will hear them testify about a number of bad things that they themselves have done. These are the kinds of people the defendants chose to work with. Not just anyone could become a Goonie. Not just anyone would be in a position to sit on the witness stand at trial and explain to you the inner workings of the Goonies. Through the testimony of these other gang members, you'll enter a world you would not otherwise have access to. The Goonies world. These gang members will walk you through the daily life of a Goonie, a life that revolved around violence. Think daily shootouts or what the Goonies called sliding looking for rival gang members and then shooting at them sometimes multiple times a day. Think taunting other gangs on social media, using social media to share the location of rival gang members for the purpose of harming them. Think doing anything a goonie could to avoid law enforcement interference using police scanners, silencing members of the community through intimidation, and ultimately getting rid of anyone who might talk to law enforcement who might snitch on them. Make no mistake, the Goonie members you'll hear from throughout this trial are criminals. They've been complicit in violence, and some of them have shot at other individuals. During this trial, you're going to hear the term cooperator. Some of the individuals who testify are cooperating with the government in exchange for some benefit. Some of them have received a reduced sentence or hoping to receive a reduced sentence in exchange for their truthful testimony. Some of them have been paid by the FBI for truthful information they have provided in this case and in unrelated cases. Some of them have received immunity to testify at this trial. When each of the witnesses testifies, we will walk you through the benefit that they've received or that they hope to receive. You should consider these cooperators' testimony with caution and with care. But as I will explain in a moment, you will not have to rely solely on the testimony of these gang members. We will present other evidence that will help support what they tell you, including testimony from numerous other witnesses with knowledge about the defendant's crimes. I'd like to spend some time now talking with you about how the case will be presented to you over the next few weeks and about the evidence that will prove the defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. We're going to present a lot of evidence over the next several weeks, the evidence spans multiple years, and you're going to see and hear many names and many faces. By necessity, sometimes the evidence is going to jump around a little bit. But at the end of the trial, the government will have an opportunity to talk to you again. And when we do, my partners will be able to explain the evidence as a whole and how it all fits together. Until then, the judge has given you a notebook and it may help to take some notes. So, let's talk about the type of evidence we will present at trial. The first is eyewitness testimony. Many of the crimes committed by the defendants happened out in the open, which means that there were witnesses. You'll hear from some of the eyewitnesses at trial who will tell you the defendants committed these crimes. These eyewitnesses include Goonie gang members as well as members of the community. Next is law enforcement testimony. 
Throughout the course of the trial, agents and officers will take the stand and walk you through the investigations that were conducted and the evidence that was collected. Specialized testimony. The government will present specialized witnesses who will help walk you through some of the evidence that was collected. For example, witnesses will help link certain shell casings that were recovered at a murder scene to firearms used by the defendants and other Goonie gang members. Recorded calls and meetings. You'll hear several recorded calls or in-person meetings involving members of the Goonies. During these calls and meetings, you'll hear Goonie members discussing the business and affairs of the gang. Facebook evidence. You'll see many photos, group messages, and several videos of the defendants and other Goonie gang members. The Goonies use social media to illustrate their allegiance to the gang and to spar with rival gangs. Many of the Goonies participated in a group chat on Facebook in which they plotted crimes together. Video footage. Some of the murders committed by the Goonies were caught on video surveillance. You'll see that footage during this trial, and you will witness numerous murders. Crime scene photos and evidence. You'll also see photos and videos from the crime scenes. These depict the manner in which the defendants and the Goonies carried out their acts of violence. We'll also show you some of the physical evidence recovered, which primarily includes fired shell casings. And of course, we will show you in person some of the Goonies' most prized possession, which were their firearms. That's a summary about the type of evidence you'll see and hear. Now let's talk about the evidence itself. 